Today we have a very special guest with us today. He's very intelligent, very smart, very handsome and mashallah a real good guy to get along with. Sadly, Ali couldn't come. <laughs> <laughs> what will we be doing today? What are we not going to be doing today? That's the real question. So we're going to be looking at some headlines. Um, some headlines that some right wing kind of tabloids, newspapers have been, um, have been putting up about Muslims in particular. And we're going to look at some of the retractions that they have made thereafter. So Daily Star first released an article December 2016 Almost half Brit Muslims want Sharia law and wouldn't report relative in ISIS Shock study oh my God. But then in February 2017 yeah. they retracted that and said almost half of Brit Muslims want a softer version of Sharia law Shock claim from study So they've, they've taken out the whole ISIS thing completely they, it's gone mate. It's gone yeah. These newspapers they rely upon market research companies yeah who kind of do a very very small scale study that they try and generalize on the British Muslim populations. So they get like a thousand people, two thousand people, ask them some very vague questions that you know it doesn't have any kind of direction and then they'll take the answers from that and they'll, they'll put it into a headline and this is fear mongering and it kind of uh, makes people scared of Islam as you can you can kind of gather from this. <laughs> Just in case people start saying that we're conspiracy nuts uh. you might be but I'm not <laughs> yeah so we're gonna check another one. Okay. Gunman screaming Allahu Akbar opens fire in a Spanish supermarket. Oh they got it right they said Allahu Akbar normally it's Allah Akbar. Really yeah? Yes. Progress. Okay. <laughs> While wearing suicide vests filled with gasoline and gunpowder. So they changed this. The so that was in January. Yeah. Then in March they retracted it. Government opens fire in Spanish supermarket while wearing suicide uh, vest filled with gasoline and gunpowder. So what's been omitted here, what's been taken out, is the whole Allah Akbar thing. This is not the way, the way the media works. It won't tell you that Muslims are terrorists, but they'll do this kind of associative reasoning. So they'll bring phrases that are associated inextricably with Islam, and then they'll kind of attach it to kind of terrorism and stuff. Next headline: Daily Express. Voters in areas with high Muslim population must show passports amid voter fraud fears. Then they changed that and said voters in vulnerable areas uh. may have to show passports government proposes. Do you know what this shows? It shows the desperation of the right wing media to try and attach the word Muslim to anything which is actually negative. And they're doing it successfully Yeah, because most people will read the Muslim ISIS sort of headline because yeah. number one it f feeds their narrative they they believe it's reality and they're much more receptive to it mm. and then when it changes it's not on the front page it's in page five or six in a dinky little section underneath yeah, the it's, sofa yeah, it's true. advert yeah and it's true anger as less than a third of Muslim uh, nations sign up to coalition against ISIS yeah correction Muslim nations sign up to co uh, coalition against ISIS. So here, it's very clear that the media is trying to actually get you not only to, to think in a certain way, but to feel in a certain way. Anger is an emotive word. You should be angry. Is that really the subtextual message here being sent forward? Be angry with Muslims. Be angry with Muslim nations. Be angry with what's not happening. New five pound note could be banned by religious groups as bank can't promise the halal. New five pound could be banned by religious groups as banks can't promise what note is made of. The word halal is taken out. Mm. You know why? Because it wasn't just something that was an issue for Muslims. It was by Hindus and Jewish people as well. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm. School children banned from singing Silent Night over fears it will offend other religions. Then this was changed to head teacher rubbishes claims that school children stopped from singing Holy Night. This newspaper here has shown, been shown really in, like just with the examples we put forward to be an incompetent newspaper. Like how many mistakes do you have to make in order for you to have some kind of quality control? Another headline from Daily Express, students yeah. left without internet after Islamic State hack major computer network. So now ISIS is attacking schools now mate. Did they retract that as well yeah? They retracted it, a UCL student who asked not to be named 
said the timing is dreadful it makes you think that it was the work of a terrorist organization so again it was an opinion of an unnamed student yeah uh, is this seriously like when you talk about like academics and stuff like this this is a newspaper it's mm. a new, it's a national newspaper this is pretty much fake news it says here this is quite this is quite shocking this is ITV as well which is very mainstream half of UK Muslims would not report extremism yeah okay First and foremost, I would love to know what kind of... And this is a question I want you guys to always ask. Because on, on a sociological level, you have to ask yourself, if they're generalizing half of the UK Muslim population, we're talking about two and a half, more than two and a half million people, by the way. It's going to be three million soon, yeah? Let's say almost three million people in the UK. How can you generalize 1.5 million people? How many people did you actually ask? What was your study? Was it a study with a thousand people? And how can you generalize 1.5 million based on a study with a thousand? And that's what they usually do. And was it a cross-section of most people in society? Have these critical questions in mind. When you go back to the website, this headline is not even there no more. Isolated Islam. British Muslims are so cut off from society, they think 75% of UK is Islamic. Report reveals. You know the census, there's like a census, um, there was an um, analysis done on the census of 2001, because every 10 years to do a census in this country, yeah? 2001, they had, um, they had like analysis on the most the least integrated uh, sections of society and number one was the jewish society so in other words the least integrated uh, uh, religious group or let's say uh, even ethnic group because jews are ethnic and religious at the same time were Jew jewish people you cannot get my channel shut down by talking about jews <laughs> <laughs> that's point one yeah number two number two was the um, the mainstream white population that was number two muslims were number three on the list yeah, from what I remember. So here, the issue of integration, whenever you hear integration, you kind of think of Muslims, don't you? Yeah. But really, is the reporting being done properly? Because according to the raw data, according to the raw data, actually, Muslims don't fare as badly, and obviously we don't put that in, in a negative way, but as badly, right, as let's say, for example, Jews or Jewish community. So we previously them. reported that the Casey Review said some segregated Muslims believe Britain is 75% Islamic. This was incorrect. In fact, the review cited a survey of people in one largely Asian school who thought 50 to 90% of the population of Britain was Asian. So they went to a school, asked a bunch of kids, and then generalized that in their... Heading. It's humiliating. I saw this is a humiliating sociological approach. This is a holiday terror fears. Um, ISIS report uh, reportedly issued direct threats to Brit holiday destination Spain. And obviously, this is one of the pro it's probably the most popular destination. So it's going to scare a lot of people. They're going to feel very inconvenienced. It's going to be like, oh, Muslims again. Now we can't even go on holiday because it's frustrating people, yeah. isn't it? And then Fears. what happened with this was it, was it just said yeah that the page disappeared. Abracadabra. This was a very famous headline. One in five Brit Muslim sympathy for jihadis. Now I remember coming across this headline as well and I thought, whoa, brothers like Muhammad Hijab, what is going on? Why have they got sympathy for jihadis? Look, first and foremost, you have to ask yourself once again, first question, what's the sample size? Who did they ask? How did they get this information? Ask yourself these questions. Honestly, as Muslims, you have to equip yourself with this critical thinking and non-Muslims. And the word sympathy, by the way, you can feel sorry for someone who's doing ridiculous things, yeah? Like, for example, mm. you can feel sorry for a pedophile. You can feel sorry for a murderer because they have transgressed on themselves so badly that you can feel sorry for it. So it's very ambiguous. It doesn't, it doesn't suggest by the questioning that the person's actually sympathetic to their cause. I feel bad. What student gunman who stormed Quebec mosque screamed, Allahu Akbar, told cops as he gave up after killing six. I had to change it. I mean, that's not... I mean, the, they took these, out the well, Allah they, they love Allah Akbar. They're saying Allah Akbar more than the average Muslim would say. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> Next headline. So that other one, was it retracted? It was retracted, isn't it? Yeah, they took the Allah Akbar out. Okay. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is, guys, listen. You really, really have to be... First of all, let me equip you guys with certain things, yeah? Number one, don't trust statistics. Because statistics are manipulated very, very easily, especially when it comes to headlines. Number two, be critical thinkers. When it comes to any uh, kind of survey that they come with, you have to think to yourself, who are, who are the, um, the sample group? Who have they actually sampled? Yeah? How many of them are there? Are they generalizable? Is it a cross section of society? These are kind of like sociology questions that you, on a GCSE level, you kind of learn. Yeah? Number three, then ask yourself, what does the raw data holistically show? For example, like the issue of integration. Yeah? If we look at integration as a holistic thing, is it the fact that Muslims are the least integrated? 
if integration is a problem, is it a fact that Muslims are least integrated? Or are there other groups, other societies? Because the, the latter is actually true. If you look at the census data, as we've mentioned before. Number four, the same thing applies with now terrorism and attacks and this kind of thing. Look, look at things holistically. So if you want to look at violence and murder, look at gang crimes as well, because that's actually part of the, the mechanism. Yeah, look at uh, different kinds of attacks from right wing groups, these kind of things. This will give you a holistic understanding of a problem. This is a social problem and it will stop you from being biased. Oh, it must be Muslims all the time. And it's true from our perspective, we also have to be honest as well. And that's the fifth point. So as a Muslim society uh, or Muslims, we have to look in and say, okay, we do have issues. There are some people who are radically inclined. There are some people who have this kind of um, thought that is instilled into them and they think that every person who's non-Muslim is the enemy. They, there are some, that does exist. We can't lie about that as well. However, how do we deal with that is a different question. You know, should we vilify the whole Muslim community? Should we smear all of Islam with that? And this is leading on to the final thing which I'll say to you, which is that do not judge Islam by what the Muslims do. One more thing I'll say is this. Remember this argument. Democracy is meant to prevent a tyranny of the majority. Yeah, A tyranny of the majority is when the majority of people are going against the minority groups like Muslims or whatever it may be, black people, whatever it may be. This, what they're doing here with the media narrative is actually a contradiction to their principle of trying to protect minority rights. They should be, if anything, amplifying the voices of the minority. They're going against their own principles or the, the Western Enlightenment principles when they do this. So this is where the problem really is. It's against democracy and it's against liberalism and it's against human rights for them to actually smear a population in the way that they've been doing. But inshallah, I, th I think this video is definitely necessary, you know. Yeah. Because I, I felt this as well with these newspaper headlines and I found it and I was like, you know what, people need to... No, I think there's good, good well research as well. And Jazakallah for bringing your insight into this. Anytime. And don't forget to subscribe to Brother Muhammad Hijab on his YouTube channel. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. We'll, we'll work on it. <laughs>